Hello, I'm Nicole Carson Boney and I'm a portrait photographer. I thought Disney's live action remake of Cinderella was delightful. It was overflowing with beautiful cinematography, gorgeous costumes, and Victorian charm. And can we talk about that dress? <laughs> Cinderella's blue ball gown was truly magical and I've been dreaming of making it ever since. My dream came true when I recently made my version of Cinderella's dress for a contemporary portrait photo shoot. I found the perfect models, Kelsey and Brady, to portray Cinderella and Kit, and we recreated some of the memorable moments from the movie and some classic portraits. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how I made Cinderella's blue ball gown without the use of a magic wand, and I'll share some useful tips I learned along the way. In the end, I'll achieve the blue grandeur of the original at a fraction of the cost and with some time-saving techniques. But before we go any further, please do me a quick favor and click the like and subscribe buttons below. Did you know there were eight versions of the blue ball gown used throughout the movie, and they were each just a little bit different depending on the scene they were used in? It took a team of 20 people 4,000 hours to create all eight dresses. The corset and the petticoat were made of steel and each dress was made of over 80 yards of fabric. The designers aren't allowed to disclose the cost of each dress, but they're estimated to have a price tag of about $12,000 each. You'll be relieved to know that I only spent about $100 on my version of Cinderella's dress, and here are the materials I used. I used taffeta for the base layer of the dress and the corset. It's lightweight and fairly stiff, which helps it hold its shape and it only cost about $3 a yard at Sass Fabrics, which is located here near Phoenix, Arizona, and I used about five yards. For the outer layer of the skirt and corset, I bought teal organza. It is semi-transparent, and the color matches the taffeta perfectly. I paid $2 a yard at Sass and used approximately 15 yards. I bought a 40-yard bolt of teal tulle for about $30 at Sass. I also found some simple cotton broadcloth to use as the lining of the corset for about $5. At SAS, I also bought a bag of 100 blue rhinestones for only a few dollars. And for boning, I used a combination of this quarter inch plastic boning, which comes in casing, and this half inch plastic boning that you can easily sew through. I found both of these on Amazon, and I'll include all the Amazon links in the description below. For embellishments, I purchased two types of butterflies on Amazon, and I also used some quilt batting spray, which I purchased at Hobby Lobby. I started with an actual pattern for the blue ball gown that I found on Etsy, which was made by Simplicity. Uh, it didn't look quite as sophisticated as I was wanting, but figured it would be a good jumping off point. I first made the corset out of some scrap pink fabric according to the pattern. I wanted to test it out and see if I needed to make any adjustments. I didn't think the pattern had a strong enough point in the front and needed to be taken in around the waist to snugly fit my model. So I just used a pencil and some pins to make some adjustments on the pink fabric. I made my new pattern pieces by placing simple gift wrap tissue paper over the simplicity patterns and traced the pattern lines. I adjusted the lines according to my pink test corset. I cut two identical sets of corset pieces out of the cotton lining and taffeta. I simply sewed all the pieces of the lining together. The organza has a lot of give to it, so in order to make sure the taffeta and organza would lay flat as the outer layer of the corset, I decided to glue them together before trimming. I used some quilt basting spray that is semi-permanent and repositionable. I sprayed the front of the taffeta pieces and gently laid them on top of the organza, being sure to smooth out any bubbles. Then I easily trimmed around each pattern piece without the need of any pins, which was super quick and convenient. To avoid confusion, I laid all the pieces out in their correct order and then pinned them together. While the glue was still tacky, I quickly began pinning and sewing the corset pieces together. I made sure to press with an iron between each step to keep my seams flat and smooth. To give structure and shape to the corset, I added one quarter inch plastic boning to the corset lining. I sewed down the outer edge of the seam allowances to make a 3 8 inch casing right next to the seam stitch line. Then I could slip the boning right into it. The boning came in a 3 8 inch casing, which I discarded after cutting them to the needed length. For the side seams, I used the wider plastic boning to give it more shape. The boning has small holes and is very easy to simply top stitch into place. To get a strong point at the front bottom edge of the corset, I added three pieces of the plastic boning. 
I cut them long enough to extend from the bottom corner to just under the bust line. I simply top stitch them into place on the lining. They have a natural curve which I sewed opposite to the curve of the thinner boning in the seams. This helped ensure the point would lean inwards towards the skirt. With the boning inserted, I stitched the lining and outer layer right sides together and then turned it right side out. I made the sleeves according to the pattern instructions. I stretched an 8 inch long piece of elastic while sewing it to the upper edge of the sleeve. This helps the sleeve stay on the shoulder while maintaining a wide neckline. The pattern instructions include using a zipper to adhere the corset, but this gown will be part of my studio wardrobe and I will have clients of various sizes who will wear this dress. So I opted to create a lace-up closure with an extension piece to allow for maximum flexibility. I created my lace by making my own double fold bias tape out of the taffeta. I cut two inch long strips on the diagonal and then ironed them into shape using a bias tape guide. Then I folded the tape in half again and stitched along the edge. I zigzagged the bias tape along the center back of both sides of the corset to create the lacing holes. I sewed through the bias tape to hold it in place. I made the sash according to the pattern instructions by cutting out a layer in tool netting and organza. Then I gathered one edge to match the length of the upper edge of the bodice. I try to avoid tan sewing whenever possible because it's tedious and time consuming. So I sewed the sash to the upper edge of the corset using a very long stitch length. Once the sash was sewn in place on the upper edge, I started working with the fullness to get the desired shape. I used pins to hold the sash in place as I worked with it. Then I stitched a couple stitches over each pin to hold the sash's shape. The corset was finally ready for the iconic butterflies. I found two different styles of butterflies on Amazon that I was really happy with. One set were very thin and simple and came in a soft blue color. The other set were a little thicker and had two rhinestones on the body of the butterfly and came in a variety of colors. I visually placed them on the sash and pinned them in place until they resembled the dress in the movie. Then I gave in and hand stitched them in place. It didn't take as long as I thought. For the skirt, I started with a layer of taffeta and cut it out according to the dress pattern. This first layer is meant to cover up the white hoop skirt underneath and be a base to the layers of transparent tulle and organza that would lay on top. Then I cut out four layers of tulle. I did not cut them using the same pattern as the taffeta layer. Instead, I cut long strips that were the length of the skirt. Then I used a gathering foot on my sewing machine to easily gather the top edge. I basically measured the linear length of the bottom edge of the taffeta layer of the skirt and doubled it to determine how long to cut the tool layers. I stacked all four layers of ruffle tool and then sewed their top edge together to make it easier to work with later. I wanted the top layer of organza to have a lot of gathered fullness. The pattern called for cutting three fabric pieces from the pattern. I more than doubled that to seven and I'm so glad I did. I used a gathering stitch on the top edge of the organza skirt layer and pulled the threads to adjust it to the waist of the taffeta layer. The pattern includes a yoke and waistband for the top of the skirt. This is really smart because it lowers the bulk of all the gathering seams a few inches below the waist. The corset is then able to cinch in tight to the model resulting in a slimmer silhouette. I made the yoke out of taffeta and added a lining. I stitched the four layers of tulle and taffeta to the lining of the yoke. Then I stitched the organza layer of the skirt to the outer taffeta layer of the yoke. I top stitched both seams for added strength. The lining and taffeta layers of the yoke were then sewn into the waistband. I used my rolled edge setting on my serger to easily finish off the bottoms of the taffeta and organza layers. The tool did not need a finished hem. As the final icing on the cake, I hand glued the rhinestones randomly to the outer organza layer of the skirt. I used these tacky rhinestone sticks to easily pick up the rhinestones. Then I applied a small dot of E6000 glue to the back side of the rhinestone and gently pressed it onto the fabric. I kept adding rhinestones to the front and sides of the skirt. I placed them denser towards the top and let them taper off towards the bottom. They add just the right amount of finish and sparkle. To assemble the dress, I start with a hoop skirt or petticoat that I purchased on Amazon for $20. This gives the illusion of a much fuller dress without the skirt having any more layers or weight than it already has. Then the skirt goes right over the top. I choose to use a safety pin to attach the waistband so that I can fit it to a variety of clients. 
the corset goes on last. It takes some patience to lace up the back. A zipper would have been so much easier, but not nearly as elegant and versatile as the lacing. This again allows me to adjust the corset to fit a variety of body types. I am so happy with how this dress turned out and I cannot wait to have it as part of my studio wardrobe. Costume designer Sandy Powell did a brilliant job by coming up with a design that is simple and elegant and definitely iconic. And blue happens to be my favorite color, so I cannot stop staring at it. We had so much fun in our contemporary photo shoot with my models Kelsey and Brady who portrayed Kit and Cinderella. Here is some behind the scenes footage and some of our favorite portraits. If you like this video, please do me a quick favor by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. Then I can keep making behind the scenes videos like this one to show you my creative process for my epic portrait projects.